What's going on, smart people? Tomorrow I'm uploading the next video on that whole tensor calculus thing, which means this video, I don't really feel like doing too much math. So today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at silly pseudoscience articles, and we're going to have fun doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Google physics proves, and we're going to find something juicy. So physics, <laughs> physics proves, if I could type, Okay, so I, I checked one out already, how quantum physics proves God's existence. I'm not bold enough to tackle that in, in one of these videos yet. So let's go ahead and look up uh, da, 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 da. how physics proves you are everywhere. Quantum oneness. I think it's hilarious how I didn't Google quantum physics anything but whenever you google these kinds of articles they, they've got to they got force in quantum there somewhere because that's that's the buzzword that's the buzzword that everyone outside of, of physics and even people in physics you know just love talking about it's quantum stuff because in a sense it's like oh that doesn't sound like it makes sense but they said quantum and i don't know quantum therefore it, they must know something i don't know quantum oneness how physics proves you are simultaneously everywhere does it though we look around we look around us using our physical sense of sight we see objects appearing as solids we can easily identify where one object ends and another begins we say that uh, when it comes to ourselves our skin is where we end and out there begins but this is completely untrue and quantum physics proves it okay and then they have a quote, space is just a construct that gives the illusion that we are separate objects, Dr. Quantum. What we perceive as, uh, as solid objects are in fact at, a sub at an atomic level not so solid at all. In fact, atoms are 99 point whatever percent empty space. I mean, that's fair. Um, this can be a mind-numbing idea, hit a brick wall, so it's, it's, yeah, okay. Your fist never actually hits. What you're feeling is merely pressure, forces interacting, um, and your nerve endings are simply reacting. Okay, so, so what this person is, is essentially saying is that there's a Coulomb interaction, and what we define as like touching things is really just particles getting close to each other. They exchange other particles, and that might change the trajectory of one or another. That's what we call touching. So I wouldn't say that that's saying touching doesn't exist, it just means touching doesn't mean how we usually use it to mean. Uh, everything that is solid is full of atoms. These atoms are surrounded by shells of electrons that cause them to push away from each other. Yeah, so just basically Coulomb interactions. And I guess poly exclusion. One could ask why the entire universe doesn't just blow up and away from itself then, right? That's because most of the... I have a hair away from me. Uh, the, 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 I lost my spot. That's because most electron shells are not full and atoms come in contact. They go back and forth between. So talking about bonding. What does this have to do with you? How does this prove that you are everywhere? Well, the activity of our little electron friends is what most of us know as energy. And it comprises what we and everything else in the universe are made of at an atomic level. I don't mean to be nitpicky, but I'm going to be nitpicky. Uh, the activity our little electron friends is energy is really interactions. It's Coulomb interactions, right? It's electromagnetic interactions. I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, everything is energy. Everything is energy. But to be more correct, it's just how these things are interacting with each other. Uh, this constant exchange between those busy little electrons is within us and can even be measured well outside the barrier of our skin. In fact, the human energy field, that's not a real thing, by the way, uh, expands about three to six feet outside of the physics body. I must have missed that one lecture where we talked about, I guess it was Newton's fifth law uh, on, on the human energy field. And it extends about three to six feet outside of the physics, outside of the physical body. Now, <laughs> uh, okay, how do I want to put this? I'm trying to put this in the context of what I think she's trying to say. 
Um, now, so if they're talking about these, this little interaction between these electrons being measurable from three to six feet outside of the physical body, and I think that's what they're trying to call the human energy field. The problem with that is that, so yes, the electromagnetic interaction has infinite range, just like gravity. The electromagnetic interaction at the same distance from an object is about, I think, on the order of 10 to the 42 times stronger than gravity, which is that whole uh, display where, put a paper clip on the ground, you know, the, the force of gravity, you have the mass of the Earth, I think that's around like 10 to the 24, 10 to the 26 kilograms, uh, the force of gravity is, is attracting radially inward towards the Earth's center of mass, and that is pushing the, the paper clip towards it. But then you can take a little magnet, put it over, and the paper clip goes up. So it's showing that at that distance range, uh, electromagnetism is much stronger than the force of gravity. Uh, but the thing is, is both of those equations for force for gravitational field and for an electromagnetic field go as 1 over r squared, meaning the farther you go away from that source, the less you feel it. But one thing to consider is the fact that um, there's no such thing as negative mass, but there is a such thing as negative charge. And when you impose this whole negative charge concept into, uh, the Coulomb, into Coulomb force, what you get is the idea of a dipole. And the force from a dipole doesn't go as 1 over r squared, it goes as 1 over r cubed. You can have multiple of them, you can literally, it's called a multipole expansion if you've had E and M. You can see that if you have a quadrupole, that goes as 1 over r to the fourth. So the more collection of these, these shared positive negative charges there are together, uh, the quicker they die off, pretty much. The quicker the force you feel from them dies off. So what I'm getting at is that it dies off for us much faster than 3 to 6 feet outside of the human body. If it didn't, then any time we walked by a paperclip, it would smack you in the face. Um, so that's not, I don't agree, even if we put it in the context of something that's actual physical, like an electromagnetic field, um, the human energy field going out to three to six feet, that just doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe this person knows something I don't know. Again, I did miss that one day on Newton's fifth law. Because this energy is free-flowing from atom to atom, this field allows us to pick up on other people's energy, i.e. feel out a person. It can even explain it even explains that sense in your gut when you first meet a person that either attracts or repels you from them. This is just that's just a, an abuse of vocabulary being like you use the word attract or repel and this person attracts or repels me. That's not the same thing. Ah, it also sheds light on the term personal space. Uh, get out of my one. Get out of my personal space. That's the first, I always think of that Rick and Morty thing whenever I see someone talking about personal space now. As it can feel quite invasive when someone brings their energy into your own energy space without your permission. I can't read that without saying it like that. You literally feel them pushing their energy onto you. In other words, you feel the electrons in their energy field impressing on your own. I mean, I kind of just already picked that apart, so I'm not going to talk about that. Then we have, I mean, what, what pseudoscience article would be complete without a Nikola Tesla quote? If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. That's fair. Whatever. Everything in the universe is energy. That wall you punched and now your bruised fist, both are energy. But what is fascinating is that they never touched one another. The atoms in the wall were simply vibrating at a different speed slash level than that of your fist. So when you directed your fist to the wall, they repelled an electric, not material. Matter is illusory? I don't, is that another way of saying matter is an illusion? Uh, not material reaction and repulsion occurred. The same occurs when you believe you are sitting on a chair. You're actually levitating on an atomic level. Okay, I mean, honestly, that was kind of okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds about right, to be honest. As far as, like, a, a pseudoscience article goes, that's probably the most 
correct thing that I've seen. Uh, so now we can conclude that from we can cl conclude from the fact that everything is energy and energy is everywhere. God, see, that's how they get you. They start with this loosely tied together syllogism and are like, I did it. I proved I proved it. Step one, everything is energy. Step two, energy is everywhere. Therefore, we are everywhere. There's something missing there. That's not that's not a logical way of getting to that. Uh, we are all everywhere, and with that, a part of one unified whole. Ponder that for a moment, and then think of how petty personal differences seem when you realize we are all the same on a much grander scale. Science is now opening doors of consciousness as it used to shun, and quantum physics is shining the light on the path to our future understanding of who we really are and just how connected we are to the vast expanse, furthermore, to the understanding that we are the vast expanse. I, I honestly, I feel like how I was putting this interaction almost, I think what she said disagrees with what her conclusion is, but what I was saying almost, almost agrees with her conclusion a little bit, in the sense that I'm saying, you know, uh, interactions like gravity and electromagnetic interactions are infinite in range, meaning technically you kind of interact with everything. It's completely negligible, but, you know, it's there. Uh, now she's saying eh, it actually only extends three to six feet. Um, so I guess the real conclusion for this is saying that you're there and you, you affect things. But I guess that's not as clickbaity as how physics proves you are simultaneously everywhere. So uh, there's a difference between saying, you know, you push something and, you know, it, it moves. And you push something, it felt me pushing it, therefore I am also there. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Tamara Rant, CEO, CEO editor of CLN as well as licensed something master heart-centered graphic designer, and a progressive voice in social media activism and awareness. I don't... So, let me, let me flip the role a little bit. Uh, I do physics. I would never th think to publish an article on graphic design. I'm not a professional at it. I don't... I couldn't be like, you know the thing about graphic design from my expertise. I just, I wouldn't be able to do that, stamp my name on it, and be like, I did a good job. I think this person bit off a bit more than they can chew, which is, I mean, look at the title. Obviously, they did. And I don't, I really don't mean to sound condescending or elitist or anything like that or say, but when you start talking about things like human energy field, you haven't, ta you clearly haven't taken any physics class ever. You know, so it's like you, you've you've seen half an episode of Into the Universe with Stephen Hawking, and then you wrote an article about connecting certain analogies and trying to unravel the universe that way. It's just not, it's not how it works, and you can't be taken seriously if you try to make these what you think are uh, logical arguments. But at the end of the day, the language of all this stuff is math. You want to be taken seriously, you got to either design an experiment to test what your hypothesis is, or come up with some mathematical framework that you think describes the same hypothesis and then have these two things sort of compare and contrast each other. That's how it's done. It's not taking analogies, kind of stretching it as far as you can, using mutual words like, yeah, I'm attracted to you, therefore your energy field is pulling me towards you. That's, that's not, that's nothing to take seriously. I think it sounds like I'm, I'm triggered or that these kinds of articles piss me off. I have fun reading them because it's, it's interesting to see how some people think who uh, are sort of, uh, I'm going to say illiterate when it comes to science, but I mean, you publish an article about us being simultaneously everywhere, that's the conclusion I'm going to draw. Uh, at the end of the day, though, her conclusion wasn't that far off from something that's true and tangible, but it really just doesn't mean anything, right? It's it's her saying, you know, we don't really touch things when we touch things, but they still react, things happen. That was the conclusion. 
Except for that one little, we're, we're energy, energy's everywhere, therefore we are everywhere. That was kind of, that was kind of, no. No, I'm sorry. I can't get behind that. But that's going to do it for this video. Again, I, I don't mean to ever sound condescending or, or abrasive, aggressive when it comes to this kind of thing. But when you publish articles like this, you know, you need someone that can call you on your bullshit. And if you're writing articles like this, odds are the people you surround yourself with know just as little about this stuff as you do, meaning that they can't call you out on it. And everyone needs that kind of person. So I don't feel bad about making these kinds of videos. I think it's necessary. And hopefully, a lot of people don't like to actually read articles. They like to read the, the title. I think other people might be more inclined to watch a video about someone else reading the article and then kind of interpreting it. So that's what I meant to do here. Also, it was just fun to do because I just got done recording the Tensor Calculus video and I needed a break. Hope you guys enjoyed this though. Let me know in the comments section if there's another article that I have missed so far that you want me to go over. And I'll see you guys there.